In the middle of this Arduino, there's a processor. It's an incredibly complex piece of technology that is built on some very basic principles. And I want to see if I can make one that doesn't use any electricity whatsoever. Roll that intro. I don't, I don't have an intro. Now, I usually do project videos in one shot. To be fair, this is usually a car channel, so it's not that today. <laughs> This is serving just as much of a diary to my madness as it is a build guide sort of thing, but at any rate, the CAD files are in the comments below if you want to follow along at home. While we're waiting for the printer and plasma cutter to finish up a few things here and there, uh, let's go in and let's do some homework. Math is hard. It's also a form of something called extended cognition. It's redistributing our thoughts and internal capabilities to the outside world. Like how we can use a lever to exert more force on an object, we can write down numbers to extend our cognitive ability and do more complex equations and more complex mathematics without having to do it all in our head. So we can use our environment to store data. Think of this like you're in the desert and you're surrounded by rocks. You could, in order to communicate, arrange them in a numbered pattern. Theoretically, you could do this with as little as seven, like a seven segment display, or you could align them in either one rock or zero rocks. And as you went along, you could order those in a certain fashion. And eventually, if you went far enough, you'd end up somewhere around XKCD 505, but that's a dangerous path. But you can communicate with rocks in the sand. Admittedly, these functions can oversimplify things almost to a fault. There's an old joke about physicists that a farmer's having trouble producing milk from his cows, so he writes the local physics department and after a few months, they send a letter back and they say, we have your answer, but first we have to assume there's a spherical cow in a vacuum. But realistically, the thing you want to take away from this is that mathematics is the vessel to transmit thinking to machines. Now, what we just went over is something called binary, and it is literally just a one or a zero. And the cool thing is, is that adding numbers in binary, which this will come into play a little bit later, is exactly the same as adding numbers in a regular set. So for example, if we take 28 plus 21, that's equal to 49. If we convert those two top numbers to binary, so 11100 is 28, and then 10101 is 21, and we just add those two numbers together just like we normally would in a standard mathematic procedure, just adding them top to bottom, we would come out with 110001, which is 49 in binary. We also need something called logic gates. This is an AND gate, which means that it takes one input and one input, and it will output one over here. If either one of these is zero, then this will become a zero. We also have a basic OR gate, which means either this one or this one can be on for it to output a one. So if this one and this one is a one, it will still output one. If this one is a one and this one's a zero, it'll still output one. If both of these are zeros, then this will output a zero. As far as my goals for this project, I think a standard adder is a little bit basic. It's been done. I think I'm really looking for something that aligns a bit more traditionally with a standard processor unit. So it has a bus, it has uh, memory, it has a timer, it has a few things like that. And I really want it to be programmable. It's 
not going to be fast and it's going to be very heavy. But um, I also want to focus on modularity a bit. So uh, right now, both of these are kind of similar. They're kind of in the same shape. But I really want to set up something where I could hot swap these out, no problem. They're built on the same basic platform and they can use, be used interchangeably. That's really my goal there. Um, of course, this will all be, be available for free as I build this. These two are already in the link in the description below and we'll update it as we go along. Overall, I'm really happy with this. Like this OR gate, right now both are zero. So we're outputting zero, one zero, outputs one, zero one outputs one, and then of course one one outputs one. So that's a great little OR gate. No problems there, very nice and smooth. AND gate is pretty good. It's not quite on the level that that OR gate is. I can also make that a lot more efficient, smaller, more compact, better. That's the first design, it works great. I'm gonna downsize it a lot. Anyways, this is an AND gate. Um, it's not quite as fluid as I wanted. I need to put some hard stops in there like I did the AND gate so it can only move a certain amount of travel. These are kind of dependent on external forces and a spring return would uh, solve most of the problems on this little critter right here. But uh, for right now it works okay. The last one we need to talk about is a knot gate. Also a knot gate is sometimes called an inverter because that's exactly what it does. Whatever value comes into it, it'll output the opposite. So if we have a one going into it or if we have a zero going into it, it'll output a one. Those are your basic three logic gates. And like Meryl Streep in The Devil Wears Prada, they pretty much carry everything for the sole fact that any of the additional logic gates that you may see, exclusive OR gates, exclusive AND gates, uh, MAND gates, any of those can be made out of those basic logic gates. As an example, this is an exclusive OR gate. We have an AND gate, we have an OR gate, we have a NOT gate or an inverter, and then we have another AND gate over here. And these two inputs are tied together, input A and input B, and then it'll output one value. So this function right here will only output a one if A or B is on. Beautiful thing is, is that if you have logic gates, you can create circuits. If you can create circuits, you can make computers, and if you can make computers, you can make programs. So that brings us back around to our joke about physicists. If all of computing can be reduced to three rules, uh, isn't that the same as a spherical cow? Yeah, kind of. There's literally thousands of different deviations and changes and theories out there. And if I haven't scared off everybody yet, there's a thing called the perceptron algorithm developed by Frank Rosenblatt back in the 1950s or 1960s. It's really the first stone cast into machine learning and neural networks like we see today. Uh, if you're watching this and you're not subscribed, um, that's based on, that's built on the backs of those early, that perceptron algorithm and those early machine learning algorithms developed in the 50s. I could do an entire video on perceptron and how it ties the McCulloch Pitts model of neuron activity into computer science. It's, it's fascinating stuff, really. Now, to my knowledge, I'm in a little bit of uncharted territory here. Mechanical computers and stuff have been around for a very, very long time. But most of the original ones perform very specific operations, like seen in this model here, where it adds sine waves together. But it can't really do anything else per se. By the time that our modern structure of machine code and logic came into effect, vacuum tubes and electricity was the by far the better way of doing all of this, so the mechanical aspect never really got explored then. And for good reason, it's the worst way of doing it by far, unless you don't have electricity. Um, and then it's the best way of doing things um, because it doesn't require anything but the basic laws of physics and, I mean, Newton's first, second, and third law. Again, spherical cow. And that's kind of why I've done a big push for basic logic gates is because it's the foundations of how this is all put together. And because there's already been a computer built out of basic logic gates that you can build at home. Check out Ben Eater's 8-bit project. And using that loose metric of how computers can be built and programmed and taught using machine code, all that we have to do is put AND gates in the right spot and it'll work, right? Well, okay. On the surface, a lot of things looked uh, a lot easier. Like, I don't have to debounce a signal coming out of a 555 IC timer, and that makes things a lot easier. 
but originally I was going to use a Geneva drive for a good constant source of motion, but as all of the physicists just screamed out in agony, Geneva drives have something called jerk, and without diving completely into why things exist, that's a momentary bit of acceleration that's um, a fault of a Geneva drive. I'm working through that. I have some ideas. So let's put all this together in a SOLIDWORKS model. This is a 4-bit adder designed entirely in SOLIDWORKS using the logic gates that I just showed earlier. It takes two 4-bit numbers and adds them together just like we did on the whiteboard. It also has 2400 components and takes up about a 24 by 24 square. Um, I need to consolidate that down a little bit, otherwise it'll take up this room. But, by all accounts, it does work. Uh, that's in a simulation space. Um, I'm probably going to do some optimization before I build that specific one, but it's a great proof of concept to stack all these together. Douglas Adams in The Restaurant at the End of the Universe once said that the function of art is to hold a mirror up to nature, and ignoring the incredibly paradoxical quote following that, I don't necessarily agree with it. Um, I think art itself is in nature and technology just reveals where it's hidden. This computer, theoretically, given enough time, could calculate the Mandelbrot set. It could solve differential equations that are foundations of, of physics. Beauty and engineering doesn't necessarily have to be efficiency, and I think that ends up somewhere around simple mechanics. That's why I build a lot of things that aren't necessarily complex, but they're fun to explore and figure out. Anyways, this is my plan. Um, I'm putting together the pieces, and this is gonna be kind of an ongoing series as I start to put it together. As always, the files are in the comments below, so feel free to mess around with it a little bit. Um, if you're here for car content, there'll be a Jaguar video next week. If you like this video, please like, subscribe, let me know what you think in the comments below, and uh, thanks for watching. Overall... <laughs>